Okay, so uh, just in the interest of time, I think we'll uh, kick it off. Uh, first, uh, some advertisement uh, under the name of the sponsor. Anyone who's in the room here who has uh, um, the Intel passport uh, could get the passport stamped later on, and I'm told there are many good things that can happen after that, so don't forget that. Anyhow, uh, this talk is, uh, is a community talk. Um, on a subject that is uh, pretty hot for uh, the OpenStack uh, community. A little bit hard to find the room, so um, we had a problem in this room earlier as well. Um, we have uh, four different uh, companies actually sponsoring the talk. Um, so I'm very pleased to uh, have uh, Toby. You want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Toby Ford. I work at AT&T, responsible for the uh, cloud effort underneath our NFV work. And uh, Chris Wright is actually here, but uh, probably also have issues uh, finding the room. Uh, we just met earlier um, this morning, and uh, Diego is in another event in, in the U.S. that is uh, taking place um, this week. So he's not uh, here, but uh, he's also supporting this uh, talk about history and, um, you know, myth of uh, early Middle East with the Tower of Babel, and we'll talk a little bit about technology too. So, this works. So, the subject is really about the menu layer. Um, that is the layer, I'm going to stand over there because the light is, is a little bit... Uh, less uh, troublesome here. Uh, the menu layer is, is that layer that from uh, the Etsy uh, model is in charge of uh, the orchestration and management of uh, the VNFs. VNF could be thought of as a group of uh, virtual machines that are collaborating in a relatively tightly coupled manner as compared with your favorite or known cloud uh, model that you have in, uh, in OpenStack, um, sim just simple uh, cloud. And as we talk, uh, we have grand uh, entrance, uh, entrance into the room by Chris Wright here. So we are just starting. You could uh, introduce yourself. There is a mic over there, and we'll continue. Uh, hi, I'm Chris Wright, uh, Chief Technologist at Red Hat, still working on finding my way around this labyrinth. <laughs> and. Uh, Great to be here. Yeah, so uh, we're talking about another labyrinth right now, uh, that of, uh, of Meno. And, and with uh, Meno, we have um, few roles that uh, that layer is, uh, is trying to uh, fulfill. Uh, on one hand, it's, it's a critical component because obviously you don't have NFV deployment unless you could place the VNFs in a way that they fulfill whatever um, was the SLA that um, you wanted around them. Um, and uh, on the other end, we need to look at where we are as a community, and that has to do not only with OpenStack, but also with uh, um, NFV uh, as, as, uh, as a phenomena as well, and, and then uh, see how we are doing as an industry. And, and what, what you see is that um, we have a uh, few requirements that um, may be presented um, best by, by Toby here and, and other operators as what uh, people would like to see from um, NFV and from Mano and the way Mano uh, may interact with uh, OpenStack and, and other layers we'll talk about, but uh, also as uh, the way we all analyze and understand the technology. And, and so um, we need to have the service requirement really match, um, or better said, the other way around, we need the um, devices, the infrastructure that supports that better match what uh, the service uh, requirements are. Uh, basic things like automation that are uh, kind of almost there today in, in cloud, uh, going to be a little bit uh, lacking here. Um, the topic of network awareness, 
That was not all that critical for your typical cloud model. In a typical cloud model, and we'll talk about it later um, in this talk, um, the VMs are loosely coupled. Uh, many times you don't have that much IO network um, resources that are required. The data plane on the server is not heavily engaged. So whether you understood the network or whether you simply look at that as, oh, here is, uh, I think I'm provisioned for whatever bandwidth and I'm simply deploying one, it's going to work, is something you want to challenge over here. Um, issues of failure, um, service predictability, how am I doing, I want to not only be able to detect failure and do that in telco time rather than in what today OpenStack allows you to have, um, I actually want to be able to pinpoint that. Remember, as Telco, we are moving from a model where um, you have physical devices, and so if that uh, service is broken, okay, it could be one of those physical devices to a model where we have multiple VMs um, distributed around some infrastructure. What is the problem? Is it uh, this piece of my VNF? Is it the network connecting them? Um, is it some extra load? I cannot tell. Um, and uh, you guys, uh, please jump in all Yeah, and in, in addition to like. these items, I mean, also the, this is not just for one site. Uh, typical OpenStack kind of history is about one location. For us, this is hundreds of locations and having to manage uh, across the resources across that type of geographic distribution, not just initial placement, but the life cycle management as well. So that's another part of it is, is making sure that, uh, you know, we get the best utilization out of the assets we have. And that involves a lot more than just what this, like the scheduler is able to do today. Other problems are, has to do with uh, high availability, with uh, scalability. Um, we have few issues with those. Not only um, don't we really know what layer is supposed to do that, is that something the Vim or OpenStack, as an example, should be doing? Is that a VNF manager? Is that um, higher up in, in the menu? How do we really avoid duplication of uh, those functions? Security goes without um, any other words. Um, we need to have specific because security is uh, definitely a very loaded term. We need to have specific services that really match uh, what we need. We are really focusing mostly in this talk about um, steps, concrete steps that we could take as a community over here. So I'm not going to spend equally amount of time or equal amount of time talking about all of those challenges. We really want to focus on some of the critical aspects, mainly around information models, data models. So when we look where we are, to finish this uh, kickoff slide, um, different players in the industry are doing different things. Um, they are building silos, which is not exactly um, a good match with uh, what uh, the telco operators would like um, to see, and it's not necessarily also uh, the best model to move, move us forward and make NFV happen as soon as, uh, as we can. Um, we have all sorts of legacy that we need to deal with, starting from the OSS, BSS, uh, but also physical devices. How do we actually make sure that uh, we integrate them? Because nobody is starting uh, completely from um, scratch. Yeah, and in addition, uh, also, we won't want to ignore the long history in, in the IT realm of working up uh, management, orchestration, monitoring policy type tools. You know, we want to be inclusive of, of that history as well as the telco's history with OSS, BSS type systems. Just I'm moving in the right direction. So, um, what we would like to suggest is that really what we are all after, and we hope that that covers all different segments of, of the industry, is we would like to see um, technology that could be deployed on a large scale, not limited to uh, one data center as an example, that is standard-based and also very, very importantly, um, 
cost efficient. Um, there is a need, we, we've all seen those graphs where um, the telco industry reports, hey, there is uh, pent up demand for services and well, the cost of the infrastructure is, uh, is not keeping up with it. Part of the reason why we are moving in, in this uh, direction. Um, can we all simply uh, help make that uh, happen and happen soon? So, um, in order to get the, there is a need for us to work together, and this talk is going to be about some of those requirements, propose some directions for the MANO architecture as well as what OpenStack itself can do, and how can we all move uh, forward together. Some uh, history lessons, as I said, this is not only about technology, it's history too. So, um, we all remember some cases where there was not really the most um, beneficial conversation that didn't really help any technology move uh, faster forward and that probably is something we would all like to avoid. Uh, you know, this uh, starts as early as uh, the days of uh, electricity where uh, we had two camps fighting for should we use alternate or direct current, etc. We all know what happened there. Uh, we better allow a model where we set some baseline and people can differentiate on top of that rather than argue over the basics. So, um, the next phase in this talk is, is about, okay, so now that we are in, in OpenStack, let's talk about some specific needs or some specific capabilities that we have that are not necessarily uh, already fully uh, supported today by OpenStack and how can we move forward and get them better supported. Um, I'm starting with performance because performance was really also historically the first thing that the industry did in order to um, see, oh, oh can, can we really deploy NV on, on some uh, standard high volume um, servers? Is it really going to work? But as we all know, technology doesn't stand by itself. It also has to be based on financials that work for folks. And, and so the performance really means that I could have um, enough horsepower on a given machine to allow me to get to a competitive cost point so that we could all pay less than what we are paying today and get more services rather than a model that cannot really support itself. So using servers um, where the data plane performance, because we are talking about um, higher performance than what you normally find in, in, in a cloud, um, more network um, oriented, more packet processing, uh, the performance is going to uh, make a big difference for you. But we have other problems or other needs, not necessarily problems, think of them as opportunities. But um, in a telco environment, I would need to have support for different types of uh, VMs that are working on the same platform if I want to keep my utilization high, if I want to keep my cost low. And now I need to make sure as I increase the utilization level, the chances of different VMs competing for uh, resources is higher. Um, therefore, I need to make sure that I have better support for that. Again, something that is not as pronounced in a cloud uh, environment. Um, scalability is also um, different here. We have the question of what layer deals with scalability, but we also have issues that have to do with the initial placement. Since a VNF is a group of virtual machines, you may want to be looking not only as to um, how individual VM is being placed, the model that we have today, but um, maybe most of the VMs I have in my VNF are placed such that they could get their SLA all right, but one of them is not, or it's placed too far away, too many network hops, not enough bandwidth, etc. That's going to bring down the whole VNF and I'm gonna be scratching my head or overutilize the resources which would allow pool packing, which again is going to uh, contribute to higher cost. 
And then when you migrate, when a VM fails, and, and yeah, you could instantiate another VM that is going to take the role of the one you just killed, but maybe that's not uh, running on the same infrastructure. Maybe that's a little bit too far away, and so all of a sudden your VNF performance uh, drops down. So this is the no notion of predictability. I would like to have a way to describe what I need all the way to the top, to the bottom, and know pretty much with reasonable level of certainty that I'm really going to get what I just asked I'm going to get. And there are other um, challenges as you could read on the slide. Okay? You jump in anytime. Okay. Front row seats for heckling. Is that, <laughs> is that how it goes? So one, one uh, little topic to um, focus on for a second, and, and then we'll move on to the information models. One way we think about that um, from Intel point of view is these two arrows that you see. Yes, it's also on the left for you. Um, one arrow is about exposing the capabilities of the infrastructure, and another arrow is expected to come down and tell us what is the requirement for that specific um, element of your application of VNF that is on, on that specific machine. In OpenStack, we are doing reasonably okay with uh, exposing the compute. We have ways to go on exposing network related. Um, and as you'll see when you start really peeling the onion on, on stuff like service chaining, we could do better as an industry on unifying our policies. We'll look later into some options to support MANO on top of OpenStack. Uh, we have too many options and none of them is exactly right. So uh, as Goldilocks said, I want it exactly right. So we'll see how we go. But specifically um, for NFV, um, we need to di distinguish between the model of the cloud where I don't know what platform I potentially go through the uh, hypervisor and the operating system and encounter those uh, uh, problems or overhead and then I cannot have tight control over my latency, my jitter, my CPU utilization, etc. to models that are more friendly for packet processing, but that is not to suggest that the only thing we are doing is packet processing. I actually want to be able to pick the right platform for the right job. So let's now look specifically into MANO, some of the requirements and some architectural options, and specifically what does it mean to put it on top of OpenStack. So um, the first concept is the concept of flexible and modular. Um, there are multiple reasons for that. What we see in the industry is that different components of the MANO layer, be it a VNF manager, uh, resource orchestration versus service orchestration, and, and we'll see what happens with the information model, um, starting to grow up in different places, some of them in silos, some of them in open source. Um, one of the ways you get a healthy, functional, collaborative um, open source community is by having your solution sliced up such that different people can contribute. You get best of breed rather than um, only uh, one, one solution. There is ongoing work at Etsy actually that is in session this week to enhance the model of service orchestration that was not fully uh, done by Etsy admitting uh, to that fact uh, in earlier days. Now it's the time to go uh, fix that. So this is um, one area that we probably would like to uh, um, go and address. Want to talk about the operator's expectation or should I cover yeah. that? No, absolutely. So I mean, for us, we want to uh we want to support vendors being uh, have their uniqueness and, and ha add their capabilities, but in a way that doesn't lock us in. You know, so there's this is sort of the ideal that we've found with OpenStack with its sort of API plugin model, is that we can get to some level of standardization, but then allow the vendors to to continue to evolve and innovate, but then when it comes to provisioning or 
uh, service assurance over time, those interfaces are consistent. We don't have to reinvent the integration over and over again. So that's helping us to not be locked in. I'm not an operator. However, I do speak with many. And one key consistent piece of feedback that we get is um, if you take a collection of VNFs and run them on a platform, you've, you've created one level of efficiency for the operator. Now you layer on top of those VNFs, VNF specific management systems and orchestration systems so that you have uniquely siloed VNF stacks on top of common infrastructure, you basically haven't solved their problem. You, maybe, you've, maybe you've created some level of, of efficiency at that, at that very base level um, in terms of hardware re, uh, reuse or, or um, consolidation, but from an operational point of view, you haven't simplified anything. And I think that's really the core of what we're, what we're talking about here. Yeah, exactly. We're trying to find where the levels above the infrastructure start to be co common enough to be a service. So sort of in a PaaS-like way, you're adding more capabilities uh, for orchestration policy uh, control that could be reused across all the VNFs, not just one. A really simple example is lifecycle management. Um, so that the trivial piece is start, stop a VM, you know, launch it, create it, destroy it. Uh, arguably scaling it is another fairly simplistic lifecycle management component, something that naturally happens in heat already, but it, that's not sufficient to actually operate a VNF. And so one of the things that I like to pick on, and, and, and Uri has it here on the, on the slide, on the left-hand side, is, is Etsy and Etsy's architecture diagram for Mano. Um, it doesn't necessarily match. It's a nice architecture. It's a nice picture. The boxes look neat on the, on the slide, but it doesn't necessarily match directly to the software world that we live in. And so here we are trying to understand where does OpenStack play in this? Uh, where, where do we need new orchestration tools that sit on top? Um, and again, that's sort of the crux of, of this discussion. Yeah, so Chris says, uh the advantage over you that he knows the slide that is coming. So we'll uh, talk about that, uh, the Etsy uh, stuff. What's about the build? Yeah, so this is the first option, and this is not trying to be prescriptive on how you actually uh, create a Mano architecture. And um, specifically, uh, I'm trying to um, not be uh, very specific about some of the sub blocks over here, but as a proposal to put something on the table to kick off the, um, kick off the conversation, I would like to highlight a few aspects of uh, a direction we could go. So um, we have uh, the Vim or OpenStack as one example at the bottom, and we have OSS, BSS at the top. Uh, not that these are constants, they are changing as well, but they, they could uh, anchor our conversation. Then, um, we would see that on the orchestration, um, what we have here is a separation of resource and um, of uh, service orchestration. And what we find when we look around in the industry is that there is more code, more readiness, um, and probably higher need to talk about uh, resource orchestration, and that goes with all of those uh, comments made earlier about uh, the data, plane, the performance, the predictability, the scalability, uh, the problems of onboarding, the problems of uh, VNF interoperability. So if we start in, in that area, um, as an industry and for all um, of the customers who are waiting for this technology, there are definitely some uh, benefits um, one could get. We'll talk about VNFM and, and specifically some examples available in uh, OpenStack, but I want to highlight uh, an important aspect that you find in that block that is called uh, Catalog Manager over there. Because that conversation, we believe, has to start from the information models and, and from at least one um, data model. And since this is, after all, the Tower of Babel and everybody is talking different modeling, and there is a reason for that, that is not criticism, this is simply because we are coming from different industries that are now trying to share 
common uh, infrastructure, and we, this is not even telco related. You have compute industry and network industry because of virtualization having to find themselves working on the same infrastructure. We all come with legacies. So that situation simply exists. And the best way to solve that, we think, is to start talking about it. And one way to do that is to take something like the Etsy um, information models, and Chris would make his comment soon, um, and, and then agree on one uh, data model, and we'll put that in, in open source, and we would all use that data model as a starting point, but we'll have a translator. So w this is not trying to exclude anything that is happening out there. This is simply trying to focus the conversation and allow us to move forward. Other requirements have to do, um, and we talked about that, and in the interest of time, we'll uh, move a little bit uh, faster there. Um, there was unclear uh, responsibility model. There are open questions, especially as telco, we need to move from uh, all the resources are in one location to multiple locations. How do we uh, handle um, that? Um, we don't really have, as, as I mentioned before, the model for OpenStack is also a moving target. We don't really have a very clear understanding of what OpenStack um, supports, maybe in this generation, but what happens in Mitaka. And then uh, you are trying to have the whole technology being deployable on multiple VIMs, and different VIM may have different APIs. So if you look carefully at this model, there is some abstraction potentially that could allow you to level the playing field, but we all know this cannot be easily done. So can we get to a point that we at least agree on some um, common denominator of what is expected from uh, each of the VIMs? And here is something specific to OpenStack as well. The notion of group that I mentioned earlier with all of the issues with pl initial placement, scaling, how you deal with HA, how you deal with failure, all of those issues are um, work for us to do. For those of you with sharp eyes and those who don't have the projector in their eyes, um, you could see the difference between this one and the previous slide as that little red line, which really talks about two options that we find in the industry right now. One where um, MANO or NFVO portion of that wants to go directly and interact with the VIM, which is supported by the Etsy model, and another one where uh, the VNFM takes a larger role. That is an open conversation, and we'll see some examples of things happening on OpenStack. Here is the first example. Um, okay, so... Um, you have a list of uh, different policies here um, at the top with those gray boxes. Different projects in OpenStack have different goals. Um, all of them are suggesting something for applications, something for telco, um, and which one should we pick? Uh, which one can we as a community converge on that is going to provide those um, services? That's an open question. If we look specifically into it, since I was uh, stealing that uh, slide from uh, one of uh, the HIT um, presentations, um, HIT has a concept of a group, but not exactly fully um, mature or, or didn't have NFV in mind when they did uh, the group. As we all know, this is coming from uh, cloud formation in AWS, so diff different model. Um, but if we are now looking at one of the information models on the table uh, coming from Tosca, you may want to look at the next level of detail where there is something called simple Tosca, then there is NFV Tosca. And the simple Tosca is more about um, the way you model your infrastructure. Yes, they have compute, they have network, they have storage in there, but they don't have uh, NFV. So now they have a new work group, a sub work group actually, that is doing NFV. Well, what we have with HIT is just the former, not, not the latter. Um, so some of the aspects we talked about earlier are, 
are missing. And um, I think the rest of the slide should be uh, clear. Toby? Yeah, and then just one thing to add about policy. Policy very important for telco is setting, ex setting expectations and then trying to meet those expectations. With uh, this model, the question that's outstanding for us is, can you overlay or lay on policy after the fact? Or are we going to have to go back and kind of revisit policy again within all the tools? Uh, that's an unresolved question. Okay. Next uh, example on, from OpenStack is uh, coming again from um, a different angle. Um, Murano started as an actually started as a deployment tool, then evolved into application catalog. At some point, there was a talk, which to the best of my knowledge is not really there anymore, to take it into um, NFVO, um, NFV orchestration. Well, um, as we could see from uh, the diagram, it uses HIT. HIT has those issues we, we just, um, just mentioned. We have um, other aspects of um, VNF friendliness, as you could see on the slide, that are not necessarily there, but it could be uh, one component of, uh, of the solution once we address uh, all the other needs. And um, the last OpenStack example, coming up soon. Here we go. Um, is obviously Taker. There was a talk earlier uh, today on Taker, and that I believe is one of uh, the slides that was uh, used in, in, in that talk. And um, so Taker started as a small project, was uh, um, actually first mentioned in the Vancouver um, summit, had uh, very few developers at the time, has a little bit more uh, right now. And it starts branching out into some of the functionalities that we really need, but uh, obviously it's yet uh, nascent, incomplete in few areas. However, um, from the OPNV community, when we as an industry looked at the solution that would allow us to coordinate an orchestrator or a Vim like OpenStack, with another open source project like Open Daylight, where is the only place today where you could find a standard-based service chaining that, with code that is uh, working on the data plane. There is more work to be done on the control plane. Um, Tecker was an interesting project to go use in order to connect the two. Mind you, in OpenStack today, we don't really have service function chaining um, with the standard base. There is early work that is going on on a re related concept, but not identical, which is uh, port chaining. So Tecker has that, but as you could see on the list here, has um, some other challenges. Any comments? I think what, what you see is a number of different solutions solving some variation on, of the same problem, each potentially bring in their own domain-specific language. And there's, you know, th this is, it's experimentation. It's going the opposite from the direction we're actually trying to go, which is it was consolidation and, and clarity of, of sort of a, a single way to, to do this. Um, and the value of all this experimentation is we're learning. Uh, but the danger you see is that e each one of these projects are really going at the, solving the problem in a really different way. and. I think that's Uri's earlier point about focusing on information and data models um, and, the, and, the, and the languages you use to model those, uh, to, to model, is at least a clear, a, a useful starting point. So, talking about information model. You think we rehearsed this or something? <laughs> um, this is an example. The example on the right, by the way, is um, the VNF uh, forwarding graph, which actually none of the solutions today support. So that is the idea that from the top, I would be able to say, here's my network service. It, it actually comprises of a few VNFs. 
and let me tell you how I expect you to connect them, what are the key uh, performance indicators, and so on and so forth, and then you repeat the process inside the VNF, which by itself also potentially comprises of multiple elements or multiple uh, VMs. So, as Chris pointed out earlier, um, we have a good starting point with Etsy, but it's not exactly um, like any other standards. Um, it does a very good service for the industry by putting some example, but it is not exactly aligned with what happens in, in open source, and then uh, also incomplete as, as we go. So, Going back, uh, just a comic relief, uh, where do we want to go? And you could see even that, that little cartoon talks about some translators, so I didn't really invent it. But it's really about let us have uh, some translation for the information models. So to draw that distinction, and basically, as you could see on the bottom right of the slide, um, the work we are involved in in orchestration is um, tell me what model you have for your infrastructure, for your device, and tell me what model you have for the service, and let me simply match the two. Um, easier said than done. We talked about the resource versus orchestration and why we think it's probably going to be easier for us to start from uh, the resource orchestration. If you solve these kind of problems, um, you have made some really good, positive, visible, tangible progress that allows us to get closer to the vision of um, NV that uh, we all have. And then we could go also into uh, the other part where vendors would seek a little bit more differentiation. Okay. Um, so some modest goals would be to make uh, progress along um, these, these lines. Um, leave that um, VNF specific um, a little bit to the side, um, start making progress with the information models we have, pick a basic uh, data model that is going to serve as a reference and move forward. But what are the areas you would ask where the information model could, should change? So for your convenience, there are five different areas. Uh, the first area, is simply uh, finish the work. Um, they're giving you here two examples of areas where there is um, a little bit of uh, lack of clarity in the work that is going on today. In Etsy, when we look at different implementation, either open source or proprietary, you see vendors uh, as an example. Because uh, the VNFC, which is a component of the VNF, and the VDU, supposedly are really trying to describe one element, like one VM, well, uh, there is some duplications in the model, so you want to clear that. Another area that you want to consider is to make sure that you have full support of uh, infrastructure awareness. Uh, we were talking about the importance of the data plane, of uh, ability to have SLA in order to drive efficiency to lower the cost, and some of it is there uh, network awareness is, is probably not complete. Because we have multiple models and because it's going to take time for us as an industry to stabilize, uh, we would like the information models to not be too restrictive so that we would be able to have all of those models till we have broader agreement in the industry whether um, there's going to be more weight on the VNFM, less, uh, what is the meaning of orchestration at MANO versus orchestration at the VIM, um, limited to one data center, many, etc. You could see that there is lots of room for vendor differentiation. This is exactly why it's empty over there. It needs to be part of the thinking. As an industry, we only move forward when different uh, communities, vendors get to differentiate, show the industry where there is more value and we move forward. And we talked about the issues with the information model. The data model is the instantiation of a specific information model that could be programmed against. So that's why we need one of those. And um, so 
that's why we think the information model may be the first priority for us to stabilize as an industry. More of us coming together with that um, is going to help drive us forward and, and OpenStack. The second uh, thing that we need to have in mind is that today, and you'll see many vendors saying, oh, I have so many VNFs and, and you could onboard them. The concern would be, can I onboard them on any Vim, on any platform? Is it limited to just those VNFs? So we need to have a better industry way to uh, help promote VNF interoperability, and then we need to resolve the architectural issues uh, with Mano and the Vim. I think one thing that, that doesn't show up on, on this slide is that there actually are not just the, the three or so different OpenStack specifics um, efforts around Mano uh, that URI proposed, but there's also others coming from the industry. Um, and so it's this wild west, and we're really trying to get a place where we come together and, and understand what are the, the least common denominator things that we can agree upon. Um, again, which is why modeling is, is, a, is a good starting point. Um, because different operators have already gone down portions of these paths for themselves. Um, and you know, it's, it's challenging for the entire industry to, to actually make real progress when you have to make a lot of expensive choices about wh where is your, uh, what are your integration points with the external systems that you're, you're actually going to run on or be op uh, orchestrated by. Yeah, to add to what Chris is saying, I mean, there, I feel like there's some urgency behind what, what is described here, because given their druthers and their past sunk investment, the telcos will continue with their existing OSS, BSS in, tools and try to open source those things. And I think there is real urgency to make this type of thing happen, so we don't, we risk having a lot of fragmentation. Which is, sounds to me like a perfect segue to this slide. So some action is required, as, as Toby is uh, suggesting. And uh, our little contribution to that action is that uh, we actually have uh, posted um, one proposal for information model um, with uh, some, some extensions over what's available right now. We are also proposing that in the session that happens this week in uh, Jersey City, I believe, uh, East Coast. And uh, we are really not trying to do anything but to help this conversation move along. So if you have any position, any interest, please um, help us um, contribute to that. And um, last, uh, Chris is uh, with, uh, at the back of the room with his uh, hands up. So thank you to our sponsor um, type of uh, a slide, again, uh, those of you who have the passport can uh, get them uh, stamped, and we have a few minutes for questions. I, I had a proposal. Uh, maybe iCal represents a standard format that we could agree upon between Etsy and OpenStack so that we stop conflicting, having our meetings happen at the same time on opposite sides of the globe. What do you think? Simple. Start simple.